Welcome to this Radiology Nation ultrasound video tutorial. In this video, we will be discussing a standardized approach to ultrasound assessment of the lower limb venous system. We will also be demonstrating the features of deep vein thrombosis. Along the way, we will stop to point out key anatomical features and offer helpful scanning tips. The veins of interest within the thigh are the common femoral vein, superficial femoral vein, deep femoral vein, and popliteal vein. We use the long saphenous vein, also known as the great saphenous vein, as a landmark for the location of the common femoral vein. We start with the probe in its axial orientation in the groin. Here we see the femoral artery and vein. The femoral artery is pulsatile and lies lateral to the femoral vein. Differentiating between artery and vein is essential. Align the probe so that the superficial femoral artery and vein appear in the centre of the image. To find the common femoral vein, we slide the probe proximally and tilt cranially until the entry point of the long saphenous vein is seen. Use the dual scanning mode to acquire an image of the CFV patent and with compression as demonstrated. A vein containing thrombus will not compress fully and may contain echogenic material. A fair amount of pressure is required to fully compress the CFV, so remember to inform the patient that the scan may be uncomfortable. Return to full screen and slowly slide the probe distally while regularly compressing the veins. The first branch of the CFV, seen here, is the deep femoral vein, after which the CFV becomes the superficial femoral vein. Acquire dual images demonstrating compression of profunda and the proximal SFV. Then continue compression along the SFV until the mid-thigh. At this point, turn the probe 90 degrees into longitudinal section and enable colour Doppler. With colour Doppler showing flow in the mid-SFV, use pulse wave Doppler and centre the cursor onto the vein. Here is an example of normal venous flow. Normal venous blood flow should also show a response to the Valsalva manoeuvre. To demonstrate this, start the pulse wave Doppler and ask the patient to take a breath in, hold it, then exhale. A normal response here indicates patency of the iliac veins and proximal venous system. Continue in transverse section, compressing the vein towards the distal SFV. It can be difficult to see the distal SFV as the vessel dips towards the adductor canal. Support the lateral thigh with your left hand and squeeze towards the probe to aid compression. To acquire an image using this technique, freeze the image after compression and scroll back through the cine loop to find the point of maximum compression. The SFV becomes the popliteal vein after it exits the adductor canal in the posterior thigh. Place the probe in the transverse orientation at the back of the knee to view the popliteal vein, which usually lies superficial to the popliteal artery. Again, acquire a dual image of the popliteal vein, with and without compression. Here it is also useful to acquire a longitudinal image with colour Doppler, as it provides a better viewpoint to image the distal superficial femoral vein. Next we scan the calf veins. Ideally, the patient will be positioned as shown to help distend the vessels. If a patient has poor mobility or is bedbound, the scan can be performed with them lying down and their knee bent at 90 degrees. The anatomy of the calf veins is displayed here in this simplified graphic. The vessels that require assessment below the knee are the anterior tibial veins, the posterior tibial veins, and the perineal veins. Each of these veins usually exist as paired veins, accompanied by a single artery. Starting with the probe in transverse, just lateral to the tibial tuberosity, we adjust the focus and depth to optimise image quality and find the anterior tibial vessels. The use of compression or colour Doppler allows differentiation between artery and vein. As before, compress the anterior tibial vein along its proximal course and acquire a dual image demonstrating its patency. Label and save the images. Move the probe to halfway down the medial calf 
with the tibia visible at the edge of the ultrasound image. When the posterior tibial and perineal veins are in view, carefully rotate the probe to obtain a longitudinal view through these vessels and select colour Doppler. Save an image demonstrating complete filling and patency of these vessels. Distal augmentation will propagate blood to move up the veins and cause increased Doppler flow. Next, we'll show you another technique to check vessel patency using colour Doppler in transverse and distal augmentation. This may be the only method possible in some patients where the calf vessels cannot clearly be seen. With colour Doppler enabled, place the probe in the expected position to view the posterior vessels and apply distal augmentation. A flash of colour should be seen in the appropriate location for the posterior tibial and perineal vessels. The same technique can be used for the anterior tibial veins or even the proximal veins during a difficult scan. To finish, here are some examples of pathology. A DVT will appear as high reflectivity within an incompressible vessel. There will also be no colour Doppler response in the vessel. It's important to note that if a DVT is seen within a vessel, you should not continue scanning the distal vessel to reduce the possibility of dislodging the thrombus. Thrombus distally would not change the management, so further investigation is not required. Thank you for watching. Watch our other videos and visit our website for more educational content.